My name is Tyler Parishon. I'm an assistant professor here at Boston University in the College of Health and Rehabilitation Science at Sargent College. The work in my laboratory looks at the brain bases of human communication, how the brain supports our capacity to speak, to understand people who are speaking to us, to recognize language and understand language when it's written, and to produce written language ourselves when we want to express ourselves either vocally or in writing. Human communication neuroscience. Uh, today's a very exciting time to be looking at the brain bases of human communication because we have an enormous variety of sensitive, sophisticated tools that we can bring to bear. Things like functional and structural neuroimaging to look how the brain is dynamic in action when it's performing communication tasks, how the structure of different people's brains differently supports their ability to use communication, how some people who have developmental language or developmental communication disorders might have different structure or function in their brain and how this can inform us about remediation strategies or better diagnostic approaches to individuals with developmental communication disorders. For example, one test of developmental communication disorders that's used very commonly is a test of non-word repetition. So I say a ridiculous word to you like shabernazzle, and then you say it back to me, shabernazzle, and that's a good test of your phonological working memory ability, your ability to take sound, piece it into its constituent units, store them, and say them back to me. And for a long time, people thought this kind of ability relied on working memory networks in the brain, things in the frontal lobe, the parietal lobe that support memory. But when we put people into the scanner and ask them to do this task, instead we see parts of the brain come online that support language, parts of the temporal lobe, Broca's area, Wernicke's area. So it suggests to us that these tasks are actually core language tasks, tasks about children's language abilities, not their memory abilities. And distinguishing between language, memory, and other skills should help us better understand the nature of these developmental communication disorders and how we can treat them.